Hello everyone and welcome to this video on decoding temperature data from a weather stage. First of all, a couple of general comments. This is my second video and in the meantime I actually acquired my own camera. But I haven't addressed the lighting and the sound issues that we encountered last time yet. This means that the sound is probably still pretty bad. And in terms of lighting, as opposed to last time, it's, uh, it's daytime outside, so maybe that already helps a little bit, but we will see. I'm still trying to figure out how to address these issues best. Now the background for this video is as follows. Some time ago I got this TFA weather station here uh, that was broken and I got it for repair. I managed to fix it, but um, while doing so I thought, yeah, you know, I mean, this, this weather station here comes with this nice external outdoor sensor. Uh, which you basically put in front of your window, it measures the temperature and sends it back to the base station using a radio link. And I thought, yeah, you know, maybe it would be cool to try to receive this data using another receiver and to decode it somehow. And also some time ago, I had purchased this RTL SDR dongle here um, for no particular reason at all, actually. It's just everybody was playing around with these guys on the web and I thought, you know, maybe it would be cool to, to buy one and to, to do some interesting things. However, I never got around doing that and was basically sitting on the shelf until now. But when I was thinking about how to decode this data, I thought, yeah, maybe I could use this dongle here to pull this off. And there are two things that are very important to me. First, I'm going to use the GNU radio framework to do this, but I never used this framework before. So clearly, this is not a tutorial on, on how to use GNU radio. This is more of a documentation of all the steps I did, and I'm sure that there is better ways to do what I'm doing. So this is just documenting my steps and showing what I did, um, and hopefully, hopefully you, you will find this interesting. Now second and more importantly, when I started playing around with this, it didn't really work and uh, you know, <laughs> because I didn't know what I was doing, so I went to the new radio IRC channel on Freenode and asked a bunch of questions and the people there were really nice and helpful. So unfortunately this was quite some time ago and I don't remember who exactly helped me but for sure these guys were very helpful and uh, I thank them for that. These dongles were originally meant for digital video broadcast reception. And I only want to briefly discuss how they work inside but still I think it's interesting because it's a little bit different from the traditional way a regular receiver works. You connect the antenna to this micro coax connector here and the RF signal is then fed into this tuner chip. The tuner chip outputs I and Q data which is sampled by this ADC here and then sent off via USB. Now I'm not entirely sure how much of the demodulation happens inside this uh, RTL ADC chip when you use the dongle as a DVB receiver, but apparently it turns out that you can get a raw I and Q data via USB for further processing inside your computer. In the first attempt to see the signal sent by the outer sensor, I fired up this program called GQRX. And what this does is essentially it displays the whole spectrum that is received by the dongle and it also allows you to tune into FM radio stations and listen to ham radio communication and things like that, demodulating the signal. Now from the manual of the weather station I knew that the sensor would transmit at a frequency of roughly 868 MHz. And I also knew that it would transmit the new temperature measurements roughly every 4 seconds. So I tuned into 868 MHz and I was expecting to see uh, these bursts of data in the waterfall diagram uh, down here. But as you can see, there is just nothing displayed. And at first this got me confused and I almost gave up. However, 
out of pure coincidence, I found something pretty interesting. This GKRX software has a feature called Squelch. And what this essentially does is it mutes the audio when no signal is received. This is a nice feature if you're listening to some communication, you want to hear what people are saying, but when nobody's transmitting, you want to mute um, the noise. And that's exactly what this does. So if I turn on the speaker here, I can hear that there is a burst of noise roughly every four seconds. And interestingly, this noise coincides with um, this indicator here that displays on the base station when a new sample uh, is received. So, based on that, I knew that I got the frequency right and probably the burst is just too short to be displayed in the waterfall diagram. The next step was then to actually demodulate and display the data sent by the sensor. In order to do this, I'm using a program called Mu Radio Companion, which is actually really nice. What this allows you to do is you can set up your own signal processing pipeline uh, using a set of predefined blocks. And you can also code your own blocks, as I will show in the next video. My pipeline works as follows. Here on the left, there is a source that is emitting the IMQ data as it is acquired by the dongle. Now, I know that I never really explained what this IMQ quadrature modulation business is, but I will link in a website that explains this in case you're interested. And I'm doing two things with this IMQ data. Here on the top, I'm converting it to uh, the magnitude. This is to detect when a signal is present, because the sensor when it is not transmitting, the magnitude of the signal is low. However, as soon as the sensor starts to transmit, you get a high magnitude of your signal. So you can use this to detect when the sensor is transmitting. And here on the bottom, I'm just demodulating the data. And I'm feeding both into this scope sync that allows me to look at the signal. If I run this whole pipeline here, um, I get this, which is um, displaying the data. There is two traces here. The blue one is the magnitude data and the green one is the demodulated signal. Now what I can do is I can set up a trigger to trigger when the magnitude is rising. which is what I just did. And I will also change the time base here to show a little bit more of the signal. And this actually looks almost like bits. So when I saw this, I knew that I was onto something because you can see that the blue trace here is rising very high. So that's when the, the sensor starts to transmit and the blue, the, sorry, the green trace here um, almost looks like bits. So in the next video, I will clean up this waveform a little bit and then show how I decoded this data to convert it back to a temperature reading. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this. I'm sure there's many ways to do what I did in a, in a better way to, to improve this. Um, if you want to discuss that, please do so in the comments. All I'm asking for though is to be polite and respectful.